What's up world, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be discussing MTL buffers and what the hell they have to do with the render pipeline. Basically by the end of this episode, I'm hoping that we'll be able to compile data together on the CPU, ship it off to the GPU, let the GPU do the processing. That will pop out of the GPU, poop it onto an NSView and voila, we'll have a gorgeous white triangle. On a side note, I started a Discord channel. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions. I know that uh, it's hard to just talk and comment, so I'll drop that in the description. Other than that, let's get started. Okay, so before we actually dive into code, I wanna talk a little bit about what MTL buffers are through way of a keynote presentation that I put together. Let me know if you like this way of teaching in the comments, uh, cause I will continue to do it. Else, if you just want me to code and talk through the code, I'll do it that way. So let's get into MTL buffers. So what is an MTL buffer? An MTL buffer is unformatted device accessible space. This means that if we were to take no bytes off in memory somewhere, and we wanna put stuff into it, to create this buffer, the first thing we're gonna do is we want 12 bytes, we need to understand, we want 12 bytes of memory somewhere that we can grab from and we know where it is at all times because we have a reference to it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna allocate enough memory. And that was what that growing was. It was allocating, right? Uh, so we've allocated 12 bytes worth of space and that's just pretty much zeros, right? There's nothing written there. It's just for our access. And when we create a buffer, one thing to note is it's always going to be the same amount. A buffer is buffered because we know that that reference will have this much data in it and no more, no less. If we write more or less into it, it's gonna overwrite other buffers and we don't wanna do that. This is going to be 12 bytes of our information. And so what we do is we allocate it and then we can store our data in there. Look at that. Now we have 12 bytes of buffer just off in nowhere. And we can grab that because we have a reference to it. So that's kind of how the MTL buffer works. Moving forward with our example, now we can use the CPU and GPU to read and write to that area um, and access that and draw it and whatnot. And we'll get into that a little bit more, but so you know, we're creating these MTL buffers so we can read and write data to a spot. In our case, in the future coming up, a triangle. Now that we're talking about triangles, how do you make a triangle? We want to draw to the screen. Our goal is to create a game engine, but we need to draw things to the screen first. We have our clear screen already going. It's rendering 60 frames per second. Uh, we have a render pipeline state set up, our render encoder, our command queue, our command buffer, all that stuff we discussed in the last episode. Um, and it's all popping that 60 frames per second. That was the important part I wanted to go across. So we need our screen. Second thing we need to do is we need to understand how to use screen space coordinates. Screen space coordinates start with an origin of zero, zero, zero at the middle. Uh, and so that's gonna be your X, Y, and Z coordinates. Zeros, the first two are the most important right now because we're working in two dimensional space. Um, and then the third component is the Z, which is uh, pointing out from your nose and coming behind you. Uh, so keep that in mind. But for now, we're just working in X, Y, Z, but, uh, or X and Y, but we're gonna keep that Z component just for now. The mins and the maxes on this are negative one and one. So the top is going to be uh, zero, one, zero, the bottom is gonna be zero, negative one, zero. So it only goes in unit space. Now that we have that kind of laid out, I wanna create a vertex array that stores our triangles information. What we'll do is we'll have these vertices and this is gonna be our data, right? So we need to store three, we, we, we need three float threes. We need the top, the bottom left, the bottom right. So let's start with the top left or the top, the top middle. We'll create a float three, since it's an array of float threes, and these are 16 bytes a piece. The bottom left is gonna be negative one, negative one, zero, and the bottom right is gonna be one, negative one, zero. So now we have our triangle. We have one, two, and three. Uh, and what will happen when we draw it is it will go one, two, three when it draws, and then three will connect back to one because we're gonna use a triangle primitive type. Um, but for, that's how we are going to put our triangle in space on our screen. So you understand when we go through the code. Um, so that's the basis for our triangle. The next thing we need to see is how to compile this data into a vertex buffer. So let's start with our vertex array we created in the last slide. We have our three float threes in an array already in, it's basically bytes right now, um, but we need to store that information. So 
What day did we work with? Well, we have our three vertices, right? Our float three at position one, two, and three. The vertex array size now uh, can be computed using, you know, we'll take the float threes and we'll multiply them by three. That gives us a total byte size of 48. That is gonna be the size of our buffer. We need our buffer to be 48 bytes in total. Let's talk about device space. What is device space? Well, in the image you see before you, I'll talk using this image because this is like this is just kind of what I think about when I think of device space. So we have these rows of unformatted buffer memory and uh, they're indexed with an um, allotted amount of allocated space and data. So we have our unformatted buffer memory that doesn't even exist right now. It's just kind of to show you uh, we can have 30 buffered memories out there at once, which is pretty kind of a lot. I don't think I'd ever need to use that much, but for now, just know that uh, 30 is probably the max for now. Um, moving on, let's create this buffer. So we can use the device, like I said, so we'll, we'll say vertex buffer equals device dot make buffer. So we're gonna use the device to make our buffer in device space. Uh, so, so we can put it in device space. So the bytes are gonna be the vertex array, which we created up at the top. Um, the size is going to be our 48 bytes and the index is going to be zero. So what that looks like in our device space table is like this. So our first index zero will have 48 bytes of allocated space and the data will be a vertex array. Now, now how do we use that with the GPU, right? We've created it, we've created this buffer, but we haven't actually set it. So let's use our vertex shader from our render pipeline state to draw with these vertices. You'll notice the first parameter that I added to our basic vertex shader is at buffer index zero. And that ties directly back to the index of our device space. So when I use my render command encoder to set the vertex buffer at index zero, I can use the vertex shader's parameter uh, attribute, like where it says buffer zero, to grab at index zero. That's kind of how that works. When we set it in device space, we can now grab it out of device space using our buffer attribute tag in our vertex shader. Then our GPU will return a position out to the rasterizer. The rasterizer will then go into the fragment function, blah, blah, blah. This is exciting, shiz. Let's get into some code. Okay, so onto the fun stuff. Like what, what, what is this episode about? It's about coding. First thing I wanna do, like I said before, I'm gonna just do basically the steps I did in the slides, is I'm gonna create my vertex array. So let's do that right now. All right, so now that we've created our vertices array, you'll notice that it's exactly what I laid out before, the top middle, the bottom right, bottom left, bottom right. Holy mackerel. So now we have our bottom left vertice and our bottom right vertice, which is, cons it, 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 it's made up of three floats, right? So X, Y, Z. Um, down here, we'll now need to create a um, vertex buffer that's uninstantiated so that we can use it in our, you know, throughout this main function, I guess you can call it. Um, so let's do that. Let's instantiate a vertex buffer. So with this vertex buffer, we need to instantiate it. I'm just gonna create a function called create buffers that will do that for us because we might need to create multiple buffers. Um, and let's just call that straight for the initializer. So let's do that. All right, so I'm getting this error because I didn't set this to var because we're gonna update it. So set that to var and this should all compile just fine. Um, Let's talk about the function that we just wrote. So vertex buffer, this vertex buffer, equals device.make buffer, use the device to make objects, or make things. Uh, the bytes are gonna be our vertices, so our array up here. The length is going to use this function called memory layout of float3.stride. This is basically size of float3. So how big is float3, which is 16, right? 16 bytes. So 16.stride times vertices.count which there's one, two, three. So 16 times three, that's how much memory we need to buffer out to store out in La La Land. The options right here is memory shared fun um, functionality. So how the memory, uh, let's just talk about that in a future episode. This is pretty cool stuff, but really we don't need to cover it in depth here, but just know this is how we create vertex buffers. So let's call create buffers from the initializer up here and scroll to the bottom. 
So now that we have our vertex buffer created, let's understand how this guy right here, this vertex shader is going to use it. Down here in the draw function, we are setting our render pipeline state, right? That we created in our last episode. And our render pipeline state consists of the vertex function and the fragment function, right? Because we've set them on the vertex or the, the render pipeline state. So in the draw function, we can also set vertex buffers using the render command encoder. So since we set the render pipeline state, we're gonna set vertex buffers. And this render pipeline state can now access that buffer data too. So no more talking, I'm gonna code, then I'll explain it. All right, so I just added two simple lines right here. First one's going to set the vertex buffer. So this is how we set the buffer in device space, okay? We use our render encoder to set it in device space at index zero. Now in the slides I showed you, index zero is buffer at zero, right? And we'll go into the shader in a second, but uh, we're setting the buffer at index zero. That's an important number. Uh, this could be 10, and then we access the buffer at 10 in the future. But for now, we're just starting at zero, one, two, three. It makes it easier. Um, then we're gonna draw the primitives. Since we're using triangle, what that's going to do is it's gonna, it's gonna start with the first vertice and then it's gonna draw in counterclockwise order. It's gonna go first vertice, second vertice, third vertice, and then it's gonna connect the third vertice to the first vertice. Did that make sense? Uh, so yeah, we're gonna do triangle and then we're gonna do however many vertices we need to draw. So if this was six, it would draw it twice. You know what I mean? Um, but it's three right now, so it'll only draw it once. So yeah, that is our Swift file all built up. That's gorgeous. This is CPU stuff. Let's go to where our GPU uses this code. So in my shaders.metal, we're gonna use this basic vertex shader. And I'm gonna just create the parameter and then we'll talk about it in a second. So watch this. All right, so we're passing, this is, this, these, these parameters are pretty cool because what this is going to do is it's going to take in whatever's at buffer zero. So these are called attribute tags. If you ever see these square brackets around this, which pretty much has to be declared for all these parameters coming in, where to grab the information. Um, buffer at zero, this is the index that we set. If this was, like I said, if I set it to 10, I would need to set this to 10 because that's where I'm setting the vertice information. Uh, device is going to be the device the place that we're grabbing the information from, there's also constant. Um, if, if I'm using the device space, I can read and write. If I'm using constant, I can only read. Uh, this is not too important as of right now, just now I'm putting it, I guess. Um, we're using uh, the vertices that I'm sending are float three, right? Because we did memory layout of float three dot size or dot stride. And so we have float three right here um, that's going to be. Uh, this the data of this vertice array. We have this pointer to vertices. Now we have this attribute tag. Next thing we need to do is we need to return each individual vertex, right? There's three vertexes. This is taking an array. We need to do them one at a time. So instead of returning our position of float four of one, 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 we need to return a float four with vertices, right? And that would be at like position zero, one, and two right that doesn't make i can't do that that's hard coded right and so what you can do is you can use another attribute tab uh a, another attribute tag called vertex id like so and what this is going to do is this is basically tracked in the back end we don't need to pass the vertex id it kind of it just keeps track of that right now and instead of hard coding these we can say vertex id and so that will return vertices at vertex ID. So vertices at zero will return the pointer of float three at zero to this. And then once it comes back through, it'll grab it at one and then at two and then at zero, one, two, over and over and over and over again. Um, so we can use this unsigned integer of vertex ID to grab that vertice. All right, so what do you think? That's, that's it. Um, if I run this right now, I believe I will get a white triangle on a green screen. So let's try that. There it is. Oh, and all our glory. We're drawing to the screen now. We, we've, we've started graphics. We've legitimately started graphics. We have learned how to take data and process it using the GPU and send it back out and pooping it onto the NSView. So cool. Ha. Huh. So, 
Yeah. That's as far as I'm going today. Um, uh, next week, we'll probably color up this triangle and I'll show you a little bit more about uh, how to do so and what, what the whole entire pipeline state means. But for now, we are now drawing things. Hopefully you have a fundamental understanding of how to do so. If you don't ask me questions using Discord uh, or in the comments, that's fine too. Comments are a little bit harder to go back and forth on. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll see you next time.